Hola, Animigos, and welcome to Keyframers. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw. And I'm your host, Stephen Korshid. Right now, we're giving a quick overview of some techniques we use to build this awesome uh, iOS cursor highlight animation. Let's talk about the parallax effect that's happening. Uh, so in, in the other video, we covered a lot of these CSS variables and how we're using that to transition the, the scale here and get that really cool effect. Uh, but one of the great pieces of this animation is, is that parallax effect where there's just a slight movement to, to everything, including this nice little hover highlight effect. Uh, so we're using all these same uh, CSS variables here um, that get removed um, for the most part uh, whenever the mouse leaves, and that's, that's helpful to use uh, so that we can transition back and forth. But for our cursor light effect, where uh, we're translating it uh, based on that px and py value that we set up here. Uh, this is basically the percentage uh, of uh, the cursor position relative to the width of the of the element uh, and the and the position of the element. Um, so that px and py value kind of gives us from negative 0.5 to 0.5 of where the where the mouse is in there, and so we use that for the cursor light. Uh, to get that um, to get that translated in the proper position, and then uh, we're using the the scale there to to get it uh, fixed up. We we covered that a little a little more in the in the other video, so check that out. Uh, and then the the button itself um, is actually moving a little bit. So the button is is has that uh, little gray border on it, and it's kind of moving with the mouse position as well, because we apply those same kind of values uh, directly to the button. Um, so we've got the width and the height mm -hmm. and the X and the Y value uh, relative to the, the pointer position um, that, we have, that we have here. And uh, David's applied that as just directly as pixel values so that it gives just a small movement of, of that. Yeah. Anyway, it's a super cool effect. Uh, you can use CSS variables uh, in this in this same way in a lot of really really cool ways just by tracking the the mouse position and you know maybe providing a little bit of uh, the rectangle values in there so you can do some advanced calculations. Um, it gets a little mathy at times, but you know that's the price of development. Uh, so <laughs> check out the full video if you want to learn more about this technique and uh, and understand a little bit more of the intricacies of how it all works together. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please leave a comment or ask in the chat and we'll be happy to answer. Our show is supported by our sponsors, CodePin at CodePin.io and CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com and viewers like you. And hey, if you've enjoyed this episode and you want to see more of us or the animations or both, two for the price of one, you can support us by pledging at patreon.com slash keyframers. That's right. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, adios, amigos. Adios.